Hey you two, black and white Tiffany here. Still curly. And the ends still look like, I don't know, my hair was like, yeah, I'm gonna curl, curl, and we're done. So, um, I'm still enjoying the curls though, gotta say. But I'm not gonna really be talking about hair today. I don't think, anyway. I never know. I, uh, I just have been thinking a lot about uh, how great this YouTube experience has been and continues to be for me. And um, I just, you know, when I started doing this, I've said I didn't know that I was ever going to do it again after the first one or what would become of it or even what my point was so much. But I think um, I felt like I had something to say and I felt like my experience could, you know, I don't know, perhaps I'd mention or, or come to some ideas that would you know, help just, like, progress this country forward and out of these antiquated ideals of race. And, um, I was arrogant not realizing that I do have something to offer YouTube, but my God, I found so many people that have a lot to offer me and change the way I think and, um, teach me how to do my hair. <laughs> So it's just really great, and I just wanted to say that because I think it's important. And um, along those same lines, I have been realizing, you know, just this journey for me, it, it becomes clearer every day, and I become clearer to myself every day. And so I want, you know, like, what does that mean that I was not clear, you know, two months ago to myself? I don't know if anyone has seen the movie Deconstructing Harry. It's a, a Woody Allen film that I think is hilarious for the most part. But there's one part of it that I always thought was kind of weird, and it stuck out to me that I was like, this is so weird, and I kind of get it, but I kind of really don't. And there's part of the movie where Robin Williams is an actor, and he's out of focus, like in his life. It's not like just on film he's out of focus. It's like when everyone looks at him, and when he looks in the mirror, he's fuzzy and out of focus. And I felt like somehow I relate to this, but I don't really get it because that's like so weird and would never happen. But I think, like when I say I'm, I'm becoming clearer to myself, I think I've always felt like I'm just walking around kind of out of focus. Kind of like <sighs> unclear to myself and it's unclear what I am to other people. Um, and I don't really care so much about the other people, but I do think it's very important for me and anyone to have a clear idea of themselves. And this is probably, people are like, duh, that's what identity issues are about. But anyway, I also have, you know, been thinking about this biracial thing for a couple of years. And now that I have spoken, like, lots of the thoughts and ideas that I've had about it, it was kind of like a constant loop of the same sort of things, but now I'm, like, getting new ideas. Um, so I just thank people for listening and allowing me to say what I had to say and then, you know, continue the thought process, expanding on these ideas, and that means a lot to me, too. Um, and so what this journey is to me is not only trying to make biracial people visible and to really talk about what it means to have a white parent and a black parent in this country when every, everything that's thrown at you and everything you see would tell you that the two things don't go together. I mean, we kind of cling to that, I think. Um... But for me, it's a lot about my journey going from being someone who was taught to and obeyed. Uh, you know, the, the rule of you're black and uh, don't even tell anybody that your dad is white. It's not something you're supposed to talk about. You're just black. You have a white parent, but you're black. And... Um, I struggle still with that every day. I, I don't have a foundational belief that I have a place in white culture. 
or that I, you know, can say loud and proud that I'm black and white. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do, as well as share ideas and get ideas from other people. Um, so I guess I'm going to say a little bit more about that. I, when I was little, I had a fear of, like, there being some big racial divide and black people being shipped back to Africa. Um, I think it stemmed from the year that Reagan was elected and my mom being, like, not a supporter of Reagan and my white grandparents anyway being a supporter of Reagan and just feeling like this is like a big deal and perhaps if this guy gets elected then um, you know black people are gonna have to leave the country or perhaps we'll choose to and then what's gonna happen to me and it I think already at that point when I was like four or five it was clear to me that I was gonna go with my mom and of course that's great I love my mom but I certainly didn't want to be separated from my dad so I think for a while I just had a clear sense that either Reagan or aliens or someone <laughs> was gonna come and like declare that you know we were all gonna have to separate um, and I couldn't share this fear or feeling with anyone because I felt like I felt like my dad would just feel bad and be like, oh, that's silly or something. And I felt like my mom would be like mad at me for even having the idea that I should want to go with white people. Even that's, I, God, this is probably sounding so racist, and I, I'm sure that I buy into stereotypes, and I'm always trying to like show the ways in which my thinking is weird and wrong and can change, because I think there's a lot to learn from that, and I certainly want to free myself from it. So I just knew that my mom would be like, kind of freaking out, like that maybe I had an idea in my head that I wasn't black. And I think that's because she wanted me first of all, to understand how I was viewed in the world, second of all, to be with her. That's my mom, and I was, am her child, and she loves me, and I think that would instill a panic. I mean, to think that your child might not choose you because of this race issue. I can't say that I haven't ever had the thought that if I had kids that were extremely light, like, would they shun me at some point? So, I just think... You know, that shouldn't be like that. That's all I'm saying, is that it shouldn't be like that. <laughs> um, yeah, I also remember kind of along the same lines feeling like, wondering often, like, what if, if each of my parents had married someone of their own race? Like, what parts of me would each of those monoracial children retain, like what parts of me would go with my dad and be white and what parts of me would go with my mom and be black. And I think those are like really big existential kind of ideas for a very young child to have. <laughs> and then to not feel like there was anywhere to, no outlet for those feelings to be heard or, you know, to work through them. Especially as an only child, I don't, I, I think it would be fabulous to have a sibling that could not only sort of show me a mirror of myself, you know, so I could see someone else biracial moving through the world, but to be like, hey, are you feeling like this? And what would happen? And what is this? You know, I, I didn't have that. So, um, like, it totally wouldn't have worked in my life for me to have a sibling. So, you know, I got really lucky and got stepsisters um, that are my sister. So, yay. Um, felt like I'm leaving one thing out that had to do with that big existential question of what parts of me would go to the white kid and what parts of me would go to the black kid that doesn't even exist. But um, I'm nearing 10 minutes, so I guess any further thoughts I have will be saved for the next Mulatto Diaries. As always, thank you for listening, watching, commenting, messaging me challenging me, encouraging me. Greatly appreciate it every day. Every day. Thank you.